Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GFS and ECMWF ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature but I also do want to start with the beginning of the video by having a look at the NAO, AO uh, and the zone, zonal uh, mean winds um, those are just different reflections of the GFS run from this morning and they do show some very very interesting things towards the end of January and very much increase the uncertainty we would normally have even in this time frame uh, as I'll show you in a minute um, so yeah things are looking very interesting over the next couple of weeks I must say it is looking very contradictory we could see um, very very cold conditions towards the end of January but we could see some very very mild conditions and I'll show you why these two scenarios and all of that in between is cropping up on the models today so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description also do check out channel membership of course getting early access to the podcast and the other perks as well so we do start by having a look at the nao and then we'll have a look at the ao as well now the nao is the north atlantic oscillation it is basically showing the strength between low pressure towards Iceland and high pressure more towards the Azores. A positive NAO means higher than average um, sort of contrast between the Icelandic low and the Azores high. Now these are generalizations that there's an always high pressure, uh, sorry, it's an always low pressure towards Iceland, but generally I, uh, lower pressure towards the pole, higher pressure closer to uh, the Azores. But when it's negative, we're seeing a weakened Icelandic low um, and Azores high, and that's more to do with the disrupted jet stream, amplification, blocking patterns, as that general west uh, or east to west, um, well, westerly wind sort of pattern is disrupted. So, as you can see here, we are generally in positive at the moment, and that basically means the westerly winds coming in. And that's why we haven't been seeing any of these ridges further northwards come off, because the NAO is slightly stronger than average, uh, or slightly positive, which means those westerly winds are slightly stronger than average, um, and that basically is going to topple any high pressure getting further northwards. They return to neutral over the next few days, um, and that means we could see a bit of a northerly wind next week as we'll see in the models in a minute um, but it's nothing too major we've needed to go a bit more negative to be seeing any uh, blocking sustained further northwards but you can see right towards the end of the runs in the longer term we see massive spread some going positive some going very negative so those negative ones would be showing quite substantial blocking towards the north atlantic you can see probably the majority maybe two-thirds staying around neutral or positive so at this stage Positive NAO may be um, more suited in the longer term, but of course we've got to keep an eye on that. But that's not the only thing that we can have a look at. We can also have a look at the AO, which is the same factor in terms of the strength of low pressure over the pole, the tropospheric polar vortex basically over the pole. Um, if it's positive, it's stronger than average, stronger westerly winds, more zonal winds. Uh, negative, more disruption, more blocking within the AO. Uh, within the sort of the Arctic region, so giving a negative AO, and you can see at the moment it generally is positive, and that's symbolic of stronger than average westerly winds, and that's again why we're not seeing any of these ridging further northwards come off with any blocking patterns. You can see over the next week or so it does start to weaken towards neutral, um, and then goes uh, stays around neutral, so maybe just either side, and that could um, allow for some cold weather at times if it is just slightly b below uh, zero, meaning that higher pressure is a bit further northwards, maybe a little bit more high pressure over the pole, bit cold air pushing southwards but it wouldn't be anything major we need it to go down to sort of minus one minus two to be seeing any major blocking but look at the end of the run massive spread some going for an absolute zonal fest that would be bringing stormy weather um, flat westerly winds hardly any amplification in the jet stream that would just be extremely strong others are going for minus four minus five with the Arctic Oscillation, which is massive blocking. Similar sort of blocking levels we'd see after a sudden stratospheric warming. But we're not going to see a sudden stratospheric warming. Uh, we can, of course, get natural, very negative AOs. Um, and we could be seeing that uh, with some of these runs going very, very negative, And that would be producing massive amount of blocking. And you can see nowhere in the last sort of three months has it been below sort of minus two. Um, you can see it was below minus two 
towards the middle end of December. And that's when we thought we could have been seeing those cold northeasterly winds, but very slight different orientation shifts and that high pressure and the jet stream meant that we stayed mild in the end. So that's why we're so close towards the Christmas period. And once again, we could be seeing a very negative AO, but there's so much spread around that it's difficult to say at this stage. Um, and it does mean over the next few days, we're pretty much guaranteed to see some bitterly cold runs and some very mild runs. And that is actually what we're seeing today, as I'll show you with the, the models in a minute. Also, do want to have a look at the zonal uh, mean winds. So this does, shows a slice through the atmosphere from 1 HPA all the way down to 1,000 HPA, uh, with 1 HPA being right at the top of the stratosphere all the way down to sort of the surface level. And on the right, this gives us um, the sort of the wind speeds. Um, zero is sort of no uh, wind speed, um, no sort of west or east biased. Positive is westerly winds so that's the general zonal pattern negative is easterly winds and if we're seeing a sudden stress rate warming we'd see easterly winds towards the top but you can see it's well above it's 45 um meters per second which is very very strong um so yeah stratosphere is very strong westerly winds at the moment and you can see towards the surface not quite as strong and that stratospheric winds are not quite um, getting through uh, that's why we have a bit of a tropospheric disconnect with the stratosphere not completely severed because we still do have strong westerly winds but if it was properly connected um, in terms of that low pressure right up in the stratosphere with the strong polar vortex that made its way all the way down to the surface and those were properly connected together we would be going to a very big westerly phase but we're not seeing that at this stage um, towards the surface it's staying generally westerly and at some points neutral and you can see that really quite well on the anomaly charts you can see real big westerly phase in the stratosphere coming up 10 to 20 um, meters per second above average um, in the stratosphere for a good sort of week or so but towards the surface it's around average maybe slightly above average and in the longer term, this GFS run, so this is a single GFS run, is showing it going weaker than average, all the way up in the top of the stratosphere as well. Now, that doesn't mean anything major. It could just be a slight weakening, um, and towards the surface, could be symbolic of a more blocking pattern. So you could see this GFS, you could say this GFS run was one of those colder runs with a more negative AO, more negative NAO, with those zonal winds towards the surface, much weaker or a little bit weaker than average meaning cold weather is more likely i do want to stress though this is one gfs run and the general ensemble runs still have a very strong zonal winds at the top of the atmosphere over the next couple of weeks so it is one run right towards the end but it just shows you there is the potential towards the end of january within some of the runs so we do have a look at the gfs run now this is the 6z run and that was showing the midnight uh midnight run but the 6z run does go for a negative AO, negative NAO, and it goes for pretty cold conditions. So if you do run through, you can see the general pattern over the next few days, very similar to what we've been seeing recently. As I said, next week we could see a bit of a northerly wind, and that's because we saw that NAO dropping a bit closer to neutral, um, and, and the AO dropping a bit closer to neutral, meaning we're getting that blocking maybe slightly further northwards. Again, the NAO AO doesn't drive anything, I must emphasise that. It doesn't drive anything, but it just... Um, sort of reflects what we're seeing in the atmosphere. So the jet stream buckling and getting a bit further northwards will send that AO a bit uh, a bit more towards neutral, that NAO towards neutral. So that's what we're seeing there. And you can see some cold air does move its way southwards, could just give us some frost, maybe a few wintry showers in the east, nothing too major, as the high pressure topples back over. But as we saw yesterday, we talk about the retrogression of this high pressure, potentially moving out more towards the north atlantic towards greenland and again we're seeing that on this run you can see that center of the high is not over the top of the uk towards day 10 day 11 day 12 it's further westwards and i want to emphasize this is in the longer term so it's not guaranteed by any means and we start to pull in pretty chilly easterly winds bitterly cold air actually and we stay in a very cold sort of pattern and right towards the end of the run we're going to be bitterly cold north and northeasterly wind and it's all because that center of the high is a bit further westwards and northwards means that high pressure getting towards greenland looking the northern hemisphere a lot more blocking around that's that negative ao so you can see the gfs run is on the colder end of the spectrum but as we'll see with the ensembles at the end of the video it's not alone by any means but there is an awful lot amount of spread between the ensembles as we'll see at the end of the video a lot of spread um 
but it does keep all options open at this stage. No huge signs of anything massive from the west, no massive signs from anything from the east or the north. As I said, all options are open. So anyone saying massive westerlies incoming, um, that's just one option at this stage. Um, there is, of course, colder options as we're seeing with this GFS run. So if you do have a look at the GEM run, which goes out to day 10, you'll see that this is the option that just stays more settled um, up until day 10. So if you do run through, you can see January, high pressure over top of the UK. We see a bit of a northerly flow next week, as I said, similar to the GFS run. So a bit cold air moving through, but we we'll just give overnight frosts um, and nothing too uh, different with that. And then right towards day 10, you see generally the high pressure just stays over the top of the UK. We see a more positive AO, as you can see over the North Pole, a lot more purples, and we generally just stay under high pressure. You do see we do start to bring up a bit of a southerly flow, so that could turn things a little bit milder, especially in the west. Towards the southeast could still be a bit of an inversion. But again, you see this high pressure trying to push southwards as that AO increases in strength. The tropospheric polar vortex increases in strength. And again, this has some support, but as I said uh, a minute ago, there's still a lot of support for more just general high pressure towards the north and over the top of the UK, and also some support for blocking. So at this stage, as I said, very, very big uncertainties. And if we do have a look at the East MWF run, the midnight run hasn't updated on Western Central for some reason, so we'll have to look at the midday run from yesterday, but it's not its not going to be too much different. I um, mean, the ECWF has been very consistent over the last few days. So you can see high pressure over the top of the UK, a bit of a northerly flow next week, by next Wednesday, and then generally high pressure over the top of the UK, and you can see right towards day 10, it could starting to be show a more negative area. You can see a split in the tropospheric pod vortex, three lobes starting to appear, one towards Russia, Scandinavia, Eastern Europe, one towards northern Canada, and then one towards Alaska and eastern Russia. Higher pressure starting to form over the centre. Now, this doesn't mean there's going to be massive um, cold potential for the UK, but it definitely is showing potential for more of a negative AO, and we'd have to see how this progresses and see if this uh, high that's ridging up from, towards the UK uh, and towards Iceland does make its way into the North Pole. And if it did do that, we would start to be pulling in this really chilly air just to our east. So we'll have to see how that does develop. The Eastern Bluff, sort of in between, not showing anything massively cold in its 10-day time frame, but showing the potential um, sort of pattern maybe beyond that of something cold. So we'll have to keep an eye, of course, what happens with that. So if you do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see the amount of spread on the 6 Z run. Pretty mild at the moment. It's going to continue to stay mild over the next sort of few days in the upper air conditions. So further northwards where you see a bit more mixing of air, it's going to be pretty mild. The next day or two actually won't be too bad in the south. We'll turn around average or slightly above average as we see a bit more mixing of air. As that high pressure does sort of pull away before getting reinforced over the next few days. So... Very dry still, maybe a few showers, maybe tonight into tomorrow morning, but nothing too major. And we'll have a look at the UK Met Office run in a minute. And then you see a bit of a colder spell. Again, a bit of uncertainty how cold that air mass will get. The average at the moment is just slightly chillier than average, so could give more widespread frosts, potentially. Some, including the operational run, are going pretty cold, and it's got a bit of support, but no, none are going majorly cold. That was showing a few days ago. And then generally we just stay around average all the way to around the 25th of January. And then the big uncertainty comes in. We do see some going bitterly cold, including the GFS operational run. You see a lot of support for that. But at the same time, quite a few going much milder than average or staying around average. There is, of course, a trend, uh, a trend um, towards colder than average conditions. You see the average of the ensemble members is a good couple degrees below average or the 1981 to 2010 mean. So, cold and average from the GFS ensembles. But as I said, these things can change very, very quickly. We're seeing for the period right now, cold and average upper air temperatures from the ensembles about a week or two ago. So, it's difficult to say. Just at this stage, probably the GFS ensembles are slightly trending towards the colder scenario in the second half, or the last sort of 10 days of January. But as I said, we'll have to see how it plays out, of course. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. And if we do have a look at the Eastern Day F ensemble, we'll go through this quite quickly, as I don't want to make this video drag on too long. If we go up to day 7, where they start to come a bit more uncertainty, you can see generally high pressure over the top of the UK, depending on the exact orientation, could have different flows, giving slightly different conditions. Um, but 
looking very similar broad pattern towards day 10 there is a bit more uncertainty coming into play still a lot of high pressure around high pressure at the top of the uk and the majority of these runs a couple showing it sort of fragmenting a little bit seven here showing a bit more of a westerly pattern four showing more of a northerly flow and another four here showing more of an easterly flow so no massive support for a massive massive change but a few ensemble members are showing a little bit different at 10 days but the biggest big uncertainty comes in around day uh, sort of 300 hours around 25th 27th time c13 just have high pressure over the top of the uk more of a flat west in the north but still probably pretty chilly in the south another 11 have high pressure over the top to the north of the uk very similar to what we actually have right now another 11 have more of a westerly wind but you can see its origins of theirs coming out of greenland so it'd be a northwesterly wind pretty chilly polar maritime air mass could be some wintriness within that but it's not like a locked in cold spell by any means it would just be a bit more rain precipitation and we have now and would be snow especially over northern western hills but not probably probably not quite exclusive to northern western hills could become to low lying areas at times as well but again only 11 uh, supporting that another 10 have high pressure in the north atlantic ridging northwards cold northeasterly winds with high pressure extended over iceland towards scandinavia and another six high pressure over the top and towards greenland with northerly winds you can see overall if you had the, the colder runs up maybe 30 percent going for colder northerly winds 11 going for or 20 percent going for northwesterly winds chilly but westerly another 21 percent going for high pressure over the top of the uk similar to what we have now and a 25 percent with more westerly flow with high pressure still um, firmly in control in the south though so Different scenarios, definitely at 300 hours and quite an even split. Right towards the end of the run, though, you see 13, so only 25.5%, so big split going westerly winds. Air again, originating from Greenland, so it would be chilly northwesterly flow. But once again, polar maritime air masses, not guaranteed snow, but would be colder than average. 11, go high pressure over the top to the north of the UK, very similar to pattern to what we have now. Another 11, have a North Atlantic ridge extending towards Greenland, northerly winds, but I would expect it to be sort of transient as we're not getting that blocking as far northwards. Another 10, have north to northwesterly winds, and another 6, have again, north to northwesterly winds. So pretty chilly in some of these longer term runs quite a few of them are going to a colder scenario not locked in cold by any means but definitely evolving a bit cold i would say the gfs ensembles were a bit colder than the east India ensembles but at this range there is a lot of uncertainty of course and we'll just have to keep an eye on what they're showing definitely though there is the potential for cold weather towards the end of january but at the same time there is potential for mild weather or just the weather staying as we are right now. Anyone saying that it's guaranteed to be one or the other um, is not looking at the overall ensemble spread at this stage. So we do have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature. You can see generally a lot of dry conditions, similar to what we've had over the last few days, of course. A lot of cloud around today, as we've seen a bit more mixing of air, it's going to mean those temperatures are going to rise a little bit more in the south especially. A few showers across the north, those could drift further southwards throughout tomorrow, just generally drizzly within cloud as well. And then through Sunday into Monday, still a lot of cloud around, maybe some clearer skies through Monday, and really quite dry before a few showers pushing through Tuesday. And we see a couple more weather fronts maybe through Wednesday as a bit of a northerly flow comes in, but again, nothing too crazy with that. If you have a look at the max temperatures, okay, you can see very cold morning this morning, especially across parts of the Midlands and Northern England. This afternoon, though, temperatures are going to rise to around 5 to 7 degrees in the south. Still quite chilly in the north, where you still, or across North Midlands, maybe Northern England as well, where we have um, colder um, air at the surface because we've got a lot more fog around. Over the course of this evening, could be another overnight frost across parts in the north, but in the south, you can see those temperatures holding above freezing because we have a bit more cloud around. I mean, we're holding slightly milder air towards the surface. Still chilly, but not uh, dropping to around freezing or below freezing. And as we would to get towards the, sort of the start in the middle of next week, just a repeating pattern, cold in the day, uh, freezing temperatures overnight, especially in the south, and just, just going to continue, maybe a bit colder in the north, especially when we see a bit more of a northerly flow, but nothing too different to this week. So big uncertainty in the longer range, but nothing really changing in the short time frames. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.